guys, last video, last video lecture for the semester, all right? You guys should be excited, you should be ready to go. I'm pumped, I'm excited. We're talking cellular respiration today, so we're going to have an awesome day, all right? We're going to be really, really cool, and we're going to have a lot of fun talking about respiration and how all that works, all right? So, let's take a look and see what we got going on here, all right? Let's look at our objectives. Today, we're going to be able to describe the reaction for respiration, analyze the steps, and how it, not just how T, but how it works. The I is uh, silent and missing. Uh, and we're also going to be able to differentiate between aerobic and anaerobic respiration. Okay, Cellular respiration is that process of taking the glucose and the oxygen all right, that either plants generate for themselves or that we take in. Remember, we eat the glucose and we inhale the oxygen in order to make ATP. This is the money equation. This is where we get all of that energy that's stored inside of our bodies to perform any type of function that our body needs to perform. All right, so we got glucose and oxygen going into it. Now we can either ingest this or if we're a plant, all right, and trust me, I know some people that are plants. They uh, make their own glucose and oxygen and produce carbon dioxide, water, and ATP. All right, so you either ingest it or you make your own. It's all about how you, which, what you are, whether you're an animal or a plant, all right? But the key thing to remember here is we start with glucose and oxygen, and we make carbon dioxide, water, and ATP. All right, let's move on. Let's talk about aerobic versus anaerobic respiration. Um, aerobic respiration, you talk about think like aerobic exercise, all right? You breathe heavy, right? During aerobics, you're like doing jumping jacks or something. You're like, <sighs> you know, you're just breathing for, you know, really, really long time. It's really tiring, especially if you're out of shape like me. That requires oxygen. Okay, aerobic respiration requires oxygen. And we can generate 36 ATP per glucose molecule, so it's pretty efficient. Anaerobic respiration does not use oxygen, all right? Anaerobic does not use oxygen. So we can only make a maximum of two ATP out of it, all right? So it's not nearly as efficient as aerobic respiration. So something to keep in mind with that as well, we got aerobic and anaerobic. And anaerobic, not nearly as efficient as aerobic, all right? Um, definitely some key differences here. So first step. When we go through this process, and again, there are a lot of really complex steps. You can see all the gigantic large words on the right, but we don't need to go through a whole lot of these. The first step is called glycolysis. And we're going to break down glucose into two molecules called pyruvate. That's really essentially all that we're doing here. And we make two ATP from this. So we take the glucose, it's the glucose that we start with, and we end up getting what's called pyruvate out of it. And there are three carbon molecules. So each pyruvate has three carbons in it and we generate two ATP as a result, all right? Now, if we're performing anaerobic respiration, we are done. If we do not have any oxygen, this is all that we do. Now, I want you to think about, like if you run for a really long time, you know you get the lactic acid built up. One of the byproducts of this is lactic acid, all right? So that's kind of where that burning sensation comes in. We don't get enough oxygen for our bodies. Lactic acid builds up in our system, and as a result, it starts to hurt. Okay, but if we get enough oxygen, we take those pyruvates, and we move on to the next part of the cycle. Again, first step is glycolysis. Glucose, we break it apart into pyruvate, and then we go from there. If you're anaerobic, that's all you do, and we get two ATP. Okay, if, we're if we are aerobic, then we move on to the Krebs cycle. The Krebs cycle essentially breaks down pyruvate, and we get two, we get some high energy electrons from that. Okay, very similar to photosynthesis. We're gonna get some high energy electrons by breaking down pyruvate, and this generates two more ATP. What's really important here though is that we need oxygen. We need oxygen for the Krebs cycle to happen. If there is no oxygen present, then we stop at glycolysis. But because there's oxygen present, all right, we move on to the Krebs cycle and we generate two more ATP. So our total is four right now. Okay, and again, this is only aerobic respiration. If you're anaerobic, you are done, all right? You stop at glycolysis. The last step is known as the electron transport chain. Those high energy electrons, it's very similar to how it works within the, uh, the, the chloroplast. 
It's very similar to how it works within the chloroplast. Those high energy electrons move across the membrane, go from the inside of the membrane to the outside of the membrane. Only here, instead of producing just a few ATP, we're producing 32. So this is the money step, all right? This is the cha-ching, I just made 32 ATP, all right? So this is where uh, most of the ATP get generated. So if you think about aerobic respiration, we get two from glycolysis, we get two from the Krebs cycle and 32 from the electron transport chain. That gives us a total of 36 electrons. Again, this can only happen if oxygen is present. If there is no oxygen present, then only the first step occurs. Okay? So we got glycolysis, Krebs cycle, and then the electron transport chain. So just a quick overview. You've got glycolysis. That's the very first step, and both the uh, aerobic and anaerobic can perform this. We make pyruvate out of it. We make two molecules of pyruvate for each molecule of glucose, and we generate two ATP. If there's no oxygen, we're done. We move on, and we keep performing glycolysis, all right? But if oxygen is present, we're going to go on to the Krebs cycle, all right? And that's where that pyruvate gets generated into high-energy electrons. Those high-energy electrons then get transport, transported to the electron transport chain and generate ATP, Okay, so glycolysis we make two, Krebs cycle we make two, and electron transport chain we make 32. So with aerobic respiration we get 36, and with anaerobic we only get two. So aerobic much, much more efficient than anaerobic. All right? One thing to keep in mind, and I think I've briefly mentioned this, you get the products of photosynthesis, right? Carbon dioxide, water, and light react to form glucose and oxygen. The glucose and oxygen, which are the products of photosynthesis, are the reactants of respiration. All right, so just another way to kind of keep those things in mind, keep a way to, for you to kind of keep track of photosynthesis and respiration. The products of photosynthesis are the reactants of respiration. Remember, we start off with glucose and oxygen, and as a result, we end up making carbon dioxide, water, and ATP. All right, so hopefully you understand a little bit about the reaction for cellular respiration. Make sure you know that, know that really well. Know what each step is to cellular respiration and how it works. So glycolysis, Krebs cycle, and electron transport chain. Know where, um, you know, aerobic and anaerobic, which one produces what, which one produces how many ATP, um, and just know your molecules, all right? I know there's a lot more detail to this, and there certainly is, but I want to make sure that you know the basics, and that's all that we're going to cover in this class, all right? So we got photosynthesis and respiration. You got your tests coming up. You got any questions? You make sure you let me know, all right, guys? We'll talk to you later, and we will start the second semester lectures here in just a little bit. Take care, guys. We'll talk to you later.